Alex Scott was unemployed when we met him on the Shankill Road. He invited us to meet his wife, her mother, and some friends, quiet, friendly people. Their attitude to the present crisis is formed by their understanding of the recent history, not of Ireland or the world, but the history of the small community within these narrow streets. It is formed also by their own religious faith and by their understanding of the nature of the authority of the Roman Catholic Church. Any, anyone up here, I don't think, would like to live under Catholic rule. I mean, there's a lot of talk going about it. I don't know whether it was rumours or whether it was actually talk that, that Northern Ireland was going to come united and the rule was going to be under the Pope. And I personally, I wouldn't like that at all. I mean, I wouldn't live under the Pope's rule no, at all. Oh, that's right. Like it, it's um, it's very hard for us. For the the Catholics are wanting civil the civil rights and this and all. But I think everybody's more interested in the civil rights. We're interested in the rights, but as far as like, you no, know, like from this has been going on right from the from the start. You know, just the helping them deliver each other. Yeah. But uh, the big division between here and. The Falls Road. Oh, there is definitely. Yeah. But not so much in the young ones. For everyone now, they all go to they all go to dances and they dance together. They go out, <coughs> go out together. But it's um. I think they're they're all right whenever they're working together. Like if, I know I work with Catholics, and they're they're all right. But I mean, it's when the people are getting a crowd, you know, that and then everything starts out then. Because I have a friend who works for me at the minute. And she is engaged to a Catholic boy, and the minute that she mentioned this engagement to her parents, they immediately stepped in and said, "All right, friendship's dead on, but as regards anything more personal as marriage or anything, we wouldn't have it." I think it's more the older people who are better towards your towards relationships. Yes, uh, the older people have lived through the last riots and uh, seen what has happened then. You mean twenty? Forty years ago. Yes. Yeah. Those people, those are the ones that yeah, they're still they understand what it was like then. Whenever the Catholics sort of went to to take over, you know. Yeah. And uh, I suppose they just don't want that to happen again. But I mean, it's like Britain is a bad place too. Because even though it doesn't seem to be, I, I think it, no matter who gets in the parliament, it still doesn't make any difference to, to what they us, you know. To the people, it, it really doesn't make any difference to the people. The ordinary what persons. they're more worried about is keeping their own religion. Mm. Not so much who gets in, but uh, who's going to stand up and uh, let them have their own religion. Mm. Keep the, more or less, keep the Catholics out. Mm. You know, don't let the Catholics take over. <laughs> what do you think is most worrisome about Catholic religion? Most. Well, um... They're under the rule of the Pope. They go by what the Pope says, not by their own feelings. You know, uh, if the uh, rule says, my, um, don't take the birth control pill, they don't take it. They're not worried about um, they're having too many children that they're not able to feed. They're just going on ahead, having more and more children whenever they know that they can't feed them. Why? Because the Pope says they're not allowed to do anything about it. You know, that type, they're not really um, allowed to do what they want. So it's more or less the same, they have their faith about us, the same as we have their faith about them, so. <laughs> We go about doing the same things as what they do. Mm. And the young people act the same. I don't think individually, individually there's not so much trouble. It's more or less when people get into crowds, that maybe one is very bitter. And they start up the rest, and then they all follow sort of like that, you know. Well, if one says this, then we'll all do it. And there's, there's not really trouble at all. It's only since this election they've started. Yeah. The Reverend Dan Paisley has started the marching. That and since that's not even, down it's not even really um, trouble, you know. It's more or less Dublin. just a... It started really then when O'Neill went to Dublin. Mm -hmm. It started then. The Protestants, they were against that. And, of course, Paisley, he was for the Protestants and he became like sort of a leader to them. Why did he get out of it by going there? <coughs> that's why they'd like to know. Like it, it, it turns on it. it and that's why our roads turned against our Prime Minister now. 
he'll be out next. Captain O'Neill. Captain O'Neill will be out. And then, so he's second of our masters. Yes. He's selling us out. How? Huh? Yeah. He's letting these civil rights marchers march. And when we want to march, we can't march. So you think Protestants are being discriminated against? Not the Catholics. No. Well, he, I would say O'Neill is selling us out and we want him out. We can get an oil pain or so. Better than him. Yeah. He's a traitor, I would say. I think it'd be hard to find another text to this also. I don't know, like, there's one time he thought he was out and he came over the TV, he made a speech and it was the poor talk he was putting on. If you want to play master, well, I leave it in your hands. He left it in our hands, he hasn't really saying it yet. Well, I think all through the generations there's still the fighting between the Protestants and the Catholics. Yeah. I don't think there'll ever come to any sort of settlement. Uh, no, for the Catholics are willing to uh, take all that's up here. They're talking about civil rights. They want a, an all united Ireland. But at the same time, if Ireland was like Dublin and weren't getting any family allowance, they're, they're getting uh, their insurance and their family allowance and things like that, and that they're still not satisfied. They want housing. They're talking a lot about housing. Well, there's lots of our people want housing and can't get it as well. Do not look at that side of it as well. There's hundreds on the list for houses here too. Protestants that can't get houses. Protestants that are living with in-laws that can't <coughs> keep them. They're sleeping in the kitchen on sofas and things like that. And they can't get housing either. The younger people are not getting a chance at all. They're sort of these higher up men don't understand the common people. Catholic or Protestant? Both. Well, they learned to live together quite well. They did live together quite well. I'll tell Captain when they took this wee trip. I mean, he sort of did it, and nobody knew anything about it, sort of stayed, you know. He did go a wee bit fast at it, too fast. And the people were beginning to live with each other. And they would do. They could work out their points themselves. We're living together and we know when we're poor, we know when we have it and when we haven't. And we sort of could all work things out together. Both Catholics and